What is going on YouTube? What is going on Basehead family? Have a cool different video for y'all today. Now CT Sounds sent me two of their Meso 6.5 inch subwoofers. I got two of those over here. And they sent me a little amp as well. So I was gonna make just kind of a review of these. And then I realized I couldn't find a good ported box for both of these guys that wasn't like 150 bucks or more. So I figured this would make a great video to show y'all how to build an easy custom box using some really easy free software that you can find online. So guys, let's get into it. First off, real quick, let's show y'all what we got going here. I already opened up this amp, so I'll show y'all that. Okay, we have the CT Sounds. This is the CT701D amplifier. This thing looks really awesome. Get y'all a real quick look up at this thing. This thing looks really cool, guys. Super excited to check this out. Let's get a super quick look up at this little beast as well. This is the CD Sounds Meso. This is the newer 2021 version. This is a little monster. This is absolutely insane, guys. Wow. This thing is so cute. It's so little, but so beefy. Look at those leads in there. Got tons and tons of glue. It's a little hard to see. <laughs> this thing is just a monster. Now they sent me two of these things, so we're of course gonna be building a box for the two of them. Now first off, of course, I wanna give CT Sounds a huge, huge shout out for sending me uh, this guy so I can make some content for y'all. I really, really appreciate it. Should you wanna get anything from CT Sounds, there will be some affiliate links in the description below. Should you click on those links and purchase something through those links, it helps out the channel a little bit which is awesome, guys. That helps me do everything I do here. Uh, I really, really appreciate each and every one of you. Let's get into the computer. I've got a free website that we're going to be using that will help me totally build a fully custom box for this thing. It's super, super easy, and it's free, so what's better than that? All right, guys, so we are on CT Sound's website. Of course, Meso 6.5 over here. Now, down here, they have the box specs, which is awesome. They have everything that we really need to calculate this. So we're going to go over here to subbox.pro. This is a free website, and it does all the calculations for you. Go down here where it says skip and make your own design. So it's really, really neat website. We'll start with the subwoofer. We have two. Of course, it's a 6.5 inch. Cutout diameter is 5.91. Mounting depth is 5.08. Subwoofer displacement is 0.05. Okay, that's what we needed for that. Let's see. For port, we're going to do a slot port on the front right. So we'll do that. Tuning, they recommend 42 hertz. We'll mess with this port area here in a minute. Now they have two different... Uh, fellas here, they have a flat response and a boomer response. We're going to go for the boomer response here. Of course, 42 hertz, as I said. And uh, they want the box to be 0.25 cubic feet per sub. So that'll be 0.5 for the two subs. Okay, so we go there. Now, as you can see, that's messing up the calculation. It's putting the port way, way too long. So we're going to go over here. Now they said uh, 12. We'll see what that gets us. Still doesn't quite work. We'll bring it to 9. Okay, 9 looks like that would work. Let's go back to the box. Let's make this thing 20 inches wide. And let's say... 12 inches high, just to see what that does. Okay. That is not looking too bad. Well, we probably could even come down on the height a little bit. Okay. That is looking really, really good in my overall opinion. So I think we have everything pretty much set here. Yeah, I guess this will work. So what's really neat about this down here, it shows all the sides of the wood that we need to get cut out. So that is really, really cool. We can click on plan, gives us some other dimensions. 
This website is just really, really neat, guys. You got all kinds of different stuff. Well, I mean, I'm using plywood, but you could change it to MDF just so it would show a different texture. Obviously, it doesn't change anything, but it's just kind of cool. Uh, top panel, it's transparent, but you can set it to normal just so you can get a full picture of the box. You can click on Take Apart, and it'll just show you all the different little sections that we got. You know, here for dimensions, we can click on Detail. It'll just show us the size of our box and all the different little dimensions. I think that's pretty cool. Pretty, pretty handy. Now, when it comes to wood, a lot of people have their own opinions on what wood to use. It's real popular to use MDF. Personally, I don't really care for MDF, but it does get the job done. I've definitely built plenty of boxes with it. Some people also like to use sanded plywood. This is just a uh, pine sanded plywood. Uh, you also can use uh, maple or birch. So there's plenty of different options. If you are using plywood, definitely want to make sure it's actual plywood like this and not particle board. Here's a piece right here I was using for one box. This stuff definitely works. It gets the job done. One thing to mention, generally speaking, the higher ply the wood is, and that just means the number of little rings it has, generally speaking, the better it is for a box. So this guy right here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ply. Uh, that works. You'll see a lot of guys using like 13 ply and stuff like that when they're building their box. So that's just something to note as well. Now for this box, I went over to Lowe's, got a sheet of plywood. This is uh, maple hardwood plywood, and it is, uh, I believe, seven ply. So this is the best thing they had at Lowe's, and it'll get the job done. It is uh, three quarters of an inch. And this stuff will definitely, definitely work. I already had a couple of small pieces of maple left over from um, another box I built. So we're going to start with those. We're going to go ahead, trace everything out and cut all my pieces. Okay, we got all the pieces cut out per the directions. I actually didn't even have to cut into this big piece, so that's good. We'll save that for another project but everything's looking good. Let's kind of show y'all how this is gonna go together. Everything came together really, really nicely. Everything seems to fit pretty good. Of course, all these gaps will be closed up when I glue and screw everything together, but everything looking good. At the top on there, it sits nice and flush, so everything was cut really, really square. Y'all, this will be the box. Of course, the two little fellas right there. This thing should be awesome. Okay, now in order to put this together, all we need are screws. I'm using one and five eighths uh, drywall screws. Some people don't like to use drywall screws, but it is plenty good for what we are doing here, guys. Got some all-purpose clear silicone. And I've got a drill with a little drill bit on it so we can pre-drill the holes. <laughs> So far going so well, just gotta put the top on. Got plenty of glue around all the edges. Just wanna make sure this thing is, of course, nice and sealed. And of course you can see with some of the edges don't come up perfectly. We will sand all that down, make it look nice. So next thing is for this guy, we of course gotta make sure we know where to put the port. So what I can do, I can stick this right here make a little mark here so we know exactly where it is or of course you could measure put another mark here and then you can set it like this have a mark there and there just so that way I know exactly where to put my screws well it is together guys Gotta let the silicone dry and then we can sand it down and make it look nice and we also can cut out our two holes and then move and then we will have a functioning box okay we've got the box done sorry it's raining out there so it might be a little bit noisy but overall it's looking not too shabby 
went ahead and sanded it down a little bit just to get it looking a little bit nicer. So next up, I gotta still put a couple screws in there, but uh, next up, gonna take out a couple of these screws near the edge, route down the edges, put the screws back in, just to kind of round off everything and make it look nice. And then we'll have a functioning box. Okay, box is all rounded off on the edges. Of course, you could use some more sanding, but I may end up either carpeting this or some sort of rhino lining this. Let me know what y'all think would look better. Also got a little cheap uh, terminal in here. It's just one of these little cheap ones that does that. Not what I would really recommend to get, but it's what I had lying around, so we're gonna roll with it for now. It'll be plenty good for doing some tests with this thing. Well, I guess we can go ahead and throw the subs in here and then test it out, see how it does. Now each of these subs are dual four ohm subs. So we're just gonna run the whole thing in parallel down to one ohm. In order to do that, we just go from positive to positive, negative to negative, positive to positive, negative to negative. And then we run the two positives and negatives together on each sub. And then I'll bring us down to one ohm at my terminal. Okay, we've got this guy hooked up to my test bench. Looking good. We ran off of this CT Sounds AT 1400-1D. Let's play something, see how this thing does. Okay, the rain is so loud, I'm having to sit in my car just so the mic doesn't uh, pick it up hitting on the roof. But y'all, always so nice to build a custom box for your subs. Just makes them sound as optimal as they can, which is awesome. So for the next video, we're gonna be putting these in the Sequoia, running some tests, seeing how loud we can get them, and just seeing overall how they sound. So that should be super, super fun, guys. Cannot wait to show you all that. The next video will also be kind of going over how much louder a eight inch is versus a six and a half inch. If you will remember, I also had those exact same subs in the eight inch version. I had two of them and we tested that out. So we'll kind of compare that to the six and a half inch just to see the difference there. Okay guys, real quick. Next sub we are gonna be giving away is the Sundown X V2. Now in order to give that away, I wanna grow my Facebook page to 1000 followers. I'm at 500 right now. So there will be a link in the description below to be entered for the giveaway for the Sundown X. All you got to do is be subscribed to this channel and be following that page. So please go like that Facebook page, guys, to be entered. I'll be going over more of the giveaway here in a video soon. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out uh, CT Sounds, check out the link in the description below. Really, really appreciate them sending me those subs for this video and for the next video as well. So CT Sounds, thank you so, so much. Cannot wait to do more testing with these guys. And y'all, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know. I know I did not go into full detail about everything building a box, but this should help to get you started. Um, that website is an awesome site for designing boxes and whatnot. I've used it before. It does great. So super awesome. It's free, really easy to use. So gang, guys, I hope that helped. And I really, really appreciate each and every one of you. Please like, comment, and subscribe as always. And y'all, please remember to always keep basing on.